What's up? James Mack family, what's good? Listen, I want y'all to be very careful, you know, during this next couple weeks. I'm talking to black Americans and immigrants as well. Listen, if Donald Trump loses, you know, black Americans and immigrants need to be very careful because we have some some very extremist, very bad individuals out there that really root for them. You know what I mean? So we need to be very cautious. And I'm going to talk about this right now. Go ahead, like, subscribe, share the video if you think it's worth it. And go ahead and make a comment. You know, go ahead and comment below on how you feel about this situation. Listen, my name is James Mack. Welcome back. Today we're talking about something very crucial, especially with black Americans in this country. You know, with this elections and everything coming up and everybody getting crazy. We've seen some things in Portland. We've seen some things in other places. No matter who wins, there's going to be some type of fallout. And feels like something from the 60s, something's from the civil rights era. But if Donald Trump loses, especially for those living in those small rural towns, you know, your, your, your Greenville, North Carolina, your South Carolina, your, your, your Charleston, South Carolina, you know, these Atlantas, you know, uh, these type of places. You need to be able and be ready to protect yourselves just in case something happened. You see what happened January 6th, Capitol Riot. You know what I mean? They really rolled out for this guy. And once again, I'm not I'm not on either part with this video. I'm just saying, you know, we need to be very cautious and very careful on how we move forward. Because, you know, with, with, with mass shootings and things like that, when certain people get upset, they don't just kill one person. They kill many people. And this is kind of like a prophecy. So we've seen images, you know, of angry mobs storming the Capitol, you know, people who was willing to use violence because they felt they were losing power. And it's something about the extremists and the supporters that feel threatened, man, they'll go out of work. You know, when I see white guys, and I ain't trying to be racist here, when I see white guys wearing that Trump hat, they feel a certain amount of power. You know, they looking at you like, you know, say something. I wish you would. I even started seeing a guy with a gun with it, with the hat on walking through the, you know, through, through the uh, the uh, grocery store. Like, he ready for whatever. Especially those in the Lynchville and, you know what I mean, uh, Charlottesville and Charlotte, North Carolina. You know, you all, we have to be very careful in the next couple days, you know, next couple weeks, you know, no matter what you're thinking, what does this have to do with me? You might be saying to yourself, well, you're a black American living in a small town. And I don't care if you agree with me or a big town. I don't care if you agree with me or not. We've seen what happened in Jacksonville, Florida, you know, these type of things, you know what I mean? And especially some of these places surrounded by mostly white communities. You see what just happened to the young man when he was in Florida, um, walking around and they was following him and stuff like that. Black people are under the spotlight right now. And when political tensions are high, small towns and these type of places could become pressure cookers. And if you think things is about to get out of control and you don't want to get a cut off guard, hold on. I got some more news for you. OK, so the reality of the violence and the racial tensions is high right now. You know what I mean? There are dark, die hard supporters. You hear me? Die hard supporters. That if they feel betrayed, they might take their anger out in these communities. And you know I ain't lying. You know, you see you see it all the time. You know, re remember when there was violence against black Americans, you know, back in the day. This is nothing new. It's been a part of our history. You know, it's been a part of our history. And these days with extremists, you know, with and their views gaining traction online and saying whatever they want to say behind these screens or whatever, you know, and they could riot. They can go into rage. They can do whatever they want to. And it can show up in any place, any just I'm just was in, you know, one of the worst cities in America, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And you see the destruction. You see the the, the wrath, the poverty. You know, you see these type of things. And this is one of the big supporters of Kamala Harris. So these are the kind of places, you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where they could just really go out on the limb and attack some folks and do some things. You know, especially in the high poverty areas, you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin is a very high poverty black area, you know, on the north side. You know, you see the footage here. Here's the hard part of all that. For those of us living in high poverty areas, you know, or you, you all live in a high poverty areas, protection is just not that simple. You know what I mean? In many communities, resources, the resources for self-defense, like personal security systems, legal firearms, even reliable law enforcement aren't that accessible. You hear all the time people coming in, you see the lady, that's her soul, called the police, the police came in and shot her in the head. You know, gun ownership can be a hurdle 
you know, at all costs involved. And sometimes they don't even feel safe with the guns. You know what I mean? That's why we have to be careful about how we protect ourselves. And, and no, I'm not saying violence is the answer, but I'm saying stay prepared and ready as necessary. You know, watch your surroundings. Keep in mind that when you see people with these long black coat on, lynch coats, uh, 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 long black coats and, and the golf boots and the, you know, the Doc Martens, man, I want you to keep that in mind. I really want you to keep that in mind. So you're saying to yourself, well, James, Matt, what can we do? First, stay informed. You know, if you're in a rural area, you're in the South, you know, know your political area, know your political climate of your town. You know, pay attention to signs of unrest. If this man lose, you want to see if guys riding down the you know, street with the big, the flattery flags and these things. You want to get out, you know, get out the way. You want to be safe. You know, second, stay armed. You know, if you could do it legally, stay armed. You know, keep your ammo. You know what I mean? You have the right. If you still have the right, if you don't have the right, then find, you got to find some, some other way. You know what I mean? It's all about your rights. You see what I'm saying? If you're able to take safety courses and get your license before all this go down. You know, this isn't about intimidation. It's about making sure that if things get out of control, you can take care of your family. We heard Tucker Carlson say he take, he keep, he keep him one on him. You know, take care of his family. That's his right. The man also said he's not a slave. The man said that. I'm going to take care of my family. I have the right to bear arms. I'm not a slave. So what does that make the people that can't, that doesn't have their rights and can't protect themselves? Finally, you know, this is the time to pull together. I hear so many people in my comments going back and forth telling me I'm wrong. And this hey, listen, I'm standing up for the people. You know what I mean? I'm just doing my, I don't hurt the messenger. You know, I'm just bringing a message. So if you're in a small town, you know, connect with other black families, share the information. To one another you know we used to do that really good in the jim crow era and in the civil rights era. It's coming together and sharing that information you know from town to town you know it's power in numbers even when we're in smaller towns and, and we in these small cities and these cities that's in poverty you know like the milwaukee wisconsin's and the gary indianas and these type of things you know, i'm not here to spread fear i'm not here to spread any type of bigotry anything like that i'm spreading awareness and we've seen it happen before. This is about making sure that we're vigilant and prepared in uncertain times because we don't know what's going to happen. Who either one could win and it might get out of control. So we have to remember that, you know, no matter what happens in this election, we got to be proactive in protecting ourselves and our communities. Because as we can see, sometimes the law enforcers don't do a great job in protecting our communities. In this video, you know, I want you to let me know if this resonated with you. Drop a comment below. Share your thoughts, man. You know, you've been doing a great job. Share your thoughts. So let's keep this conversation going. And if you've already hit the like and subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any more videos, I'm dropping them. You know, I just became, you know, monetized. And that's a big accomplishment. We still got a lot of work to do because I'm not doing the dancing. I'm not doing the pranks. I'm bringing the message and the word. You know, I want to make sure that you hear something. You know, this was designed to be impactful, informative addressing black America's concerns in today's political political climate. So while I'm encouraging communities to take on unity and proactive safety measures, you know, I'm also trying to give you some inspiration, some hope. You know, you still go out and vote and do your thing, but be very, 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 very careful because this is the second generation of the Jim Crow era right now we're living in. And as you can see, black folks got it a little bit tough right now. You know what I mean? And I want to make sure the way people handling us and, you know, calling us blacks and just doing us any old type of way. You know, our numbers is down when it comes to employment and these type of things. You know, numbers is down when it comes to wealth. Numbers is down on a lot of different issues. So if you're talking about black Americans have some of the highest numbers of unemployment. I don't know where you from, where you at. But, you know, you look at these clips during my video, you see the reality of what's going on in our community. You know, in some of our communities in Atlanta ain't no better. D.C. and Chicago, New York City. You see the poverty. You see it. So I'm not going to hold you long. It's James Mack. Like, subscribe, share. I love you, family. Look out for the next video.